Welcome back to Surfbed Nerd. I'm Philip. Hm. And I'm Whitney. Blah! All of our friends at other pop culture outlets went to Tokyo over the weekend for the Ghost in the Shell, but we had to stay home and kick cans. Nope, I kicked the light. But don't worry, I mean, there were a lot of cans that needed kicking, so I guess our job is important too. Yeah, we just gotta get off that damn no-fly list. How'd we get on there anyway? All right, so uh, we're gonna still geek out over the beautiful, beautiful trailer that just dropped. Seriously, watch it again and again and again, because I think it's so pretty, I love it. But there are just a couple of things about this trailer and this movie that Whitney and I want to point out to you, discuss, and then we'll get your thoughts below. First up, we already knew that director Rupert Sanders was obsessive with his visual recreations of the source material, and this trailer shows that we got even more shot for shot matches. Oh, look at these, shot for shot. Oh boy, and this, it looks like this, but this looks like this. Shot for shot. All right, I think we're good. For shot. Hey, let's talk about nipples. Oh, time for nipple talk? Hell yeah. Hi there, and welcome back to Nipple Talk. This is the show where we take a good hard look at the state of the human areola and ask the important questions. Like, where'd the nipples on that suit go, huh? Also, is it important to have nipples on a piece of futuristic technology just to match the source material? And is it weird that removing nipples helps maintain a PG-13 rating when this scene is about a freaking assassination attempt? Well, there are a couple things to consider when we look at ScarJo's nipless titters. Keeping that PG-13 rating means that this movie has a better chance of being successful, so they had to nix the nips. Also, maybe ScarJo just didn't want to spend a huge chunk of the movie running around naked, which is completely fair of her. Honestly, I could take or leave the nips in life and in this movie, as long as we do acknowledge that American modesty is ridiculous. She can murder, but God forbid she has nipples. Yeah, I think mostly people are concerned that if they deemed nipples too inappropriate for the movie, they also may have cut out some other adult-leaning things that we loved about the anime. Why? Because we're big ol' pervs. Oh yeah, we're big ol' pervs. Oh, what's that? Oh, we have a collar? Sam Anonymous from Los Angeles, California. Do you have a question for Nipple Talk? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, nipples. Is that a question or? All right, sorry. Uh, what do they even look like? <laughs> oh, that's easy. Cut to a clip. That was a fake out. That was a trick question. Okay, so something else we want to chat about. The trailer has a few lines that imply how special the Major is. Now, they sound kind of cool, but it's important to point out that this isn't in line with the source material at all. The Major isn't really unique, she's just another instance of a bunch of prosthetics coming together into being a full-blown cyborg. The reason why this matters is that Ghost in the Shell explores the themes of mechanized humans, well, humans, literally coming off assembly lines and them having to come to grips with that. That's something that's very fresh and interesting. In fact, it's so fresh and interesting, we're seeing an entire show about this right now, it's HBO's Westworld. And also, damn, oh my god, that last episode, I called it. No spoilers! With the movie choosing to make the Major all special and the first of her kind, that's okay, sure, but they're gonna have to explore that in a fresh way because we've kind of seen that thing before. Like, a lot of times before. Y yeah, all, many, many times. But that doesn't mean that they won't be able to make it unique, just an observation of a challenge they'll have to overcome. True. Ah. <laughs> but also, something that you might take away from this trailer is, holy fuck, this is going to be action-packed. Now, I'm always down for fighting and explosions and some slow-mo, but like, not too much and fighting and like cool weapons and maybe fighting and murders and uh, you um... You forgot fighting. Ah, fighting. But the story they seem to be borrowing most heavily from here, it's the Ghost in the Shell 1995 film. It's not the most action-packed. Right, and while adding a ton of action isn't necessarily a bad thing, in fact, let's be honest, sometimes source material is boring and needs some action to keep our butts in those seats. Yeah, our butts are always liable to like float right off a seat. Oh, we got zero G butts, a gift and a curse. But I really hope that they aren't sacrificing the normally explored themes for just more action. Like, I loved Civil War, but if you read the full comic storyline, their world is crumbling, like everyone is broken, and the entire world ends up turning on Cap's Avengers. They literally have to hide underground. So in order to make it a more typical Hollywood movie, they actually had to drop a lot of the issues with grief and what it means to be a hero, and mostly just focus on more action. So I do think they actually pulled it off yeah. in that movie, but it's a really difficult balancing act. Philip and I both obviously loved the San Junipero episode of Black Mirror, we can't stop talking about it, and those ideas are what's at stake here, that exploration of what it means to be human and what it means to be alive. Living in a world where technology makes everything hyper-connected and yet still feeling disconnected from each other? Is your organic body essential to your existence? Can consciousness be duplicated? Basically, this goes into some deep shit, and we're just crossing each other's fingers that they don't lose that here. All in all, they're clearly doing a really great job of capturing the visuals of the originals, but we'll have to wait and see if the story and acting and writing and themes and <laughs> all the rest will live up to our expectations. And speaking of beautiful visuals, our sweaters came in for four human people. 
Pole. Tight segue. I freaking <laughs> love my Dark Knight of the North Pole sweater. Yeah, and I'm gonna wear my Hail Satan sweater every day forever. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, you can get them at ForHumanPeoples.com. And by the way, For Human Peoples is having a big Cyber Monday sale this year. Uh, two weeks before everybody else's Cyber Monday sale. So, so basically, it's not your daddy's Cyber Monday sale. They're blasting out deals from now until November 16th at midnight with $5 off posters, $5 off phone cases, $5 off hats, and 10 bucks off bags. And 10 bucks off a leggy leggings. It's all at ForHumanPeoples.com. That's it for us, unless you know you want to talk to us outside of this video player, because then you can hit us up on Twitter at TweetNemore and at Fimo. Or take pity on our weird little lives on Snapchat at Fimo Knows and at Whitney S. Moore. Whitney S'more. Subscribe for that and for us and for more news. Share this video with your ghosts in the shell, pals, and we'll see you next time. Let's go find those nips. Oh, they gotta be here somewhere. Oh, I found two. <laughs> I found six. Ew. Oh, lobster pussies. Have we really gone ahead four years? Has it been four years? Yeah. Now that you're here, I want to take your virginity on camera. Yeah, I know how taking someone's virginity works, but.